Good day to you all and welcome to the seventh day of August. It's day 219 in our journey through the Bible. Hello out there to everyone. My name is Heather. I'm here with you on Sundays at the Daily Radio Bible. We are about to do what we do every day. We are about to spend some time in God's Word and let His Word spend some time on us. Today's readings are Jeremiah 1 and 2 and finishing up in John 10. So let's jump right in. Jeremiah 1 These are the words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests from the town of Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin. The Lord first gave messages to Jeremiah during the thirteenth year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah. The Lord's messages continued throughout the reign of King Jehoiakim, Josiah's son, until the eleventh year of the reign of King Zedekiah, another of Josiah's sons. In August of that eleventh year, the people of Jerusalem were taken away as captives. The Lord gave me this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. O sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. The Lord replied, Don't say, I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, Look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against the nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. Then the Lord said to me, Look, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. And the Lord said, That's right. And it means that I am watching, and I will certainly carry out all my plans. Then the Lord spoke to me again and asked, What do you see now? And I replied, I see a pot of boiling water spilling from the north. Yes, the Lord said, For terror from the north will boil out on the people of this land. Listen, I am calling the armies of the kingdoms of the north to come to Jerusalem. I, the Lord, have spoken. They will set their thrones at the gates of the city. They will attack its walls and all the other towns of Judah. I will pronounce judgment on my people for all their evil, for deserting me and burning incense to other gods. Yes, they worship idols made with their own hands. Get up and prepare for action. Go out and tell them everything I tell you to say. Do not be afraid of them, or I will make you look foolish in front of them. For see, today... I have made you strong, like a fortified city that cannot be captured, like an iron pillar or a bronze wall. You will stand against the whole land, the kings, officials, priests, and people of Judah. They will fight you, but they will fail, for I am with you, and I will take care of you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Jeremiah 2 The Lord gave me another message. He said, Go and shout this message to Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. I remember how eager you were to please me as a young bride long ago, how you loved me and followed me even through the barren wilderness. In those days, Israel was holy to the Lord, the first of his children. All who harmed his people were declared guilty and disaster fell on them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Listen to the word of the Lord, people of Jacob, all you families of Israel. This is what the Lord says. What did your ancestors find wrong with me that led them to stray so far from me? They worshipped worthless idols only to become worthless themselves. They did not ask, Where is the Lord who brought us safely out of Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, a land of deserts and pits, a land of drought and death, where no one lives or even travels? And when I brought you into a fruitful land to enjoy its bounty and goodness, you defiled my land and corrupted the possession I had promised you. The priests did not ask, Where is the Lord? Those who taught my word ignored me. The rulers turned against me, and the prophets spoke in the name of Baal, wasting their time on worthless idols. Therefore, 
I will bring my case against you, says the Lord. I will even bring charges against your children's children in the years to come. Go west and look in the land of Cyprus. Go east and search through the land of Kadar. Has anyone ever heard of anything as strange as this? Has any nation ever traded its gods for new ones, even though they are not gods at all? Yet my people have exchanged their glorious God for worthless idols. The heavens are shocked at such a thing and shrink back in horror and dismay, says the Lord. For my people have done two evil things. They have abandoned me, the fountain of living water, and they have dug for themselves cracked cisterns that can hold no water at all. Why has Israel become a slave? Why has he been carried away as plunder? Strong lions have roared against him and the land has been destroyed. The towns are now in ruins and no one lives in them anymore. Egyptians, marching from their cities of Memphis and Tophanes, have destroyed Israel's glory and power. And you have brought this upon yourselves by rebelling against the Lord your God, even though he was leading you on the way. What have you gained by your alliances with Egypt and your covenants with Assyria? What good to you are the streams of the Nile or the waters of the Euphrates River? Your wickedness will bring its own punishment. Your turning from me will shame you. You will see what an evil, bitter thing it is to abandon the Lord your God and not to fear him. I, the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, have spoken. Long ago I broke the yoke that oppressed you and tore away the chains of your slavery. But still, you said, I will not serve you. On every hill and under every green tree you have prostituted yourselves by bowing down to idols. But I was the one who planted you, choosing a vine of the purest stock, the very best. How did you grow into this corrupt wild vine? No amount of soap or lye can make you clean. I still see the stain of your guilt. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. You say, that's not true. I haven't worshipped the images of Baal. But how can you say that? Go and look in any valley in the land. Face the awful sins you have done. You were like a restless female camel desperately searching for a mate. You were like a wild donkey sniffing the wind at mating time. Who can restrain her lust? Those who desire her don't need to search, for she goes running to them. When will you stop running? When will you stop panting after other gods? But you say, save your breath. I'm in love with these foreign gods, and I can't stop loving them now. Israel is like a thief who feels shame only when he gets caught. They, their kings, officials, priests, and prophets, all are alike in this. To an image carved from a piece of wood, they say, You are my father. To an idol chiseled from a block of stone, they say, You are my mother. They turn their backs on me, but in times of trouble they cry out to me, Come and save us. But why not call on these gods you have made? When trouble comes, let them save you if they can, for you have as many gods as there are towns in Judah. Why do you accuse me of doing wrong? You are the ones who have rebelled, says the Lord. I have punished your children, but they did not respond to my discipline. You yourselves have killed your prophets as a lion kills its prey. O my people, listen to the words of the Lord. Have I been like a desert to Israel? Have I been to them a land of darkness? Why then do my people say, At least we are free from God. We don't need Him anymore. Does a young woman forget her jewelry or a bride her wedding dress? Yet for years on end, my people have forgotten me. How you plot and scheme to win your lovers. Even an experienced prostitute could learn from you. Your clothing is stained with the blood of the innocent and the poor, though you didn't catch them breaking into your houses. And yet you say, I have done nothing wrong. Surely God isn't angry with me. But now I will punish you severely, because you claim you have not sinned. First here, then there, you flit from one ally to another, asking for help. But your new friends in Egypt will let you down, just as Assyria did before. 
In despair, you will be led into exile with your hands on your heads, for the Lord has rejected the nations you trust. They will not help you at all. John 10 I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant, so he explained it to them. I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers. But the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for the money and doesn't really care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me, just as my father knows me and I know the father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep, too. They are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I sacrifice my life so I may take it back again. No one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily, for I have the authority to lay it down when I want to, and also to take it up again, for this is what my Father has commanded. When he said these things, the people were again divided in their opinions about him. Some said, He's demon-possessed and out of his mind. Why listen to a man like that? Others said, This doesn't sound like a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? It was now winter, and Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of Hanukkah, the festival of dedication. He was in the temple walking through the section known as Solomon's Colonnade. The people surrounded him and asked, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I have already told you, and you don't believe me. The proof is the work I do in my Father's name. But you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me, for my Father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Once again, the people picked up stones to kill him. Jesus said, At my Father's direction I have done many good works. For which one are you going to stone me? They replied, We're stoning you not for any good work, but for blasphemy. You, a mere man, claim to be God. Jesus replied, It is written in your own scriptures that God said to certain leaders of the people, I say you are gods. And you know that the scriptures cannot be altered. So if those people who received God's message were called gods, why do you call it blasphemy when I say, I am the Son of God? After all, the Father set me apart and sent me into the world. Don't believe me unless I carry out my Father's work. But if I do His work, believe in the evidence of the miraculous works I have done. Even if you don't believe me, then you will know and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Once again, they tried to arrest Him, but He got away and left them. He went beyond the Jordan River, near the place where John was first baptizing, and stayed there a while, and many followed him. 
John didn't perform miraculous signs, they remarked to one another, but everything he said about this man has come true, and many who were there believed in Jesus. I hope you caught it, the story of God. I hope this story of God catches you. Jesus comes to teach us how to live in God's story. It's the story of a good and loving shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep, and we are his sheep. He invites us to live in that story. He tells us very plainly here that he gathers his sheep. He gathers them in through the gate and brings them into the sheepfold. He rescues the sheep from danger and brings them under his care. Then he calls out the sheep from the sheepfold by name. He knows them by name. We're told that he walks ahead of the sheep, leading them out into the world. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. They run from any other voice because they've learned to depend on the shepherd. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Just like those sheep, the shepherd Jesus is our source of life. He's rescued us, called us out into the world by name and gifted us. So we walk out with the shepherd, letting him lead us each step of the way. This is the story of God. Jesus is teaching us in this story how to live in his story of life, abundant life. In this story of rescue, there is danger. There's a thief that wants to steal, kill, and destroy the flock. But we, his sheep, are known by name, and when we learn to live in the story of God, by the power of God, we will experience deliverance from this thief who wants to kill us. And it will be the Good Shepherd who delivers and protects us. We will experience a rich and satisfying life under his care. Jesus says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. He wants us to learn how to live in his story. The only way we can is to gather under his care, hear him call us out by name into this world with purpose, understanding what he has made us for. We must learn to depend on him each step of the way as he leads us, following his voice each day, training our souls to hear him. He is a good shepherd who has laid down his life for us, his sheep, whose names he knows. He's called us out into this pasture, this world, and has given us a purpose. You and I are in the story of God, and he has given us life. Rejoice in this story today by listening to his voice and following him wherever he leads you. Thank him for rescuing you. DailyRadioBible.com That's our home base out here on the interwebs where you are always welcome to stop on by. Thanks for spending another Sunday here with us. And we want to say thank you also for all of you who have signed up for our monthly newsletter. We just sent one out last week and we send them out only about once a month. If you would like to receive our next one and you haven't signed up yet, you can go to dailyradiobible.com and fill out the little short form there to be on our list for next month. You can also follow along with us on our Facebook and Instagram pages as well. Well, that's all I have for today. As usual, Hunter will be back with you again tomorrow morning. But until that time, let's go forward. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. And remember this, you are loved. <laughs>